Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this flame game development series where we are making a simple platformer game using the flame engine. In the last video, we modified the door component so that players can interact with it and navigate between levels. And in this video, I'm going to do something similar for the coin component. I'll be making coins interactable just like doors. But instead of changing the level, interaction with coins will increase the player's score. Right now, we don't have any place to store or even display the score. So in this video, we will just detect when player touches a coin and then we'll just make the coin disappear. We'll look into the scoring system later when we'll add the heads up display. So the first thing that we need to do is, we need to make the coin collidable. And for that, I'll add the collision callbacks mixin to coin class. Then next, in the onload method, let's add a circular hitbox to current coin with its collision type set to collision type dot passive. Next, let's override the on collision start method for this class. In this method, similar to what I did in door class, I'll first make sure that other is player. If that is true, I'll add a remove effect to current coin. Now effects is a new type of component that we haven't used before this. At the very core, an effect just modifies appearance or a particular property of parent component to which it is attached. For example, remove effect marks the parent component to get removed from the game world with an optional delay parameter. Flame provides a lot of such effects right out of the box and you can read about them in the flame docs. Now back in our code, we will not provide any delay for this remove effect. This essentially means that the coin will be removed from the game world as soon as it hits a player component. Now let's run this and see how it looks in the game. Ok, and as you can see, coins are disappearing when player touches them. This means our code is working fine. But I don't like how suddenly they are disappearing. Instead, let's try to fade them out slowly. And to do that, we can use the built-in opacity effect. So let's replace the remove effect with an opacity effect. And as you can see, there are multiple named constructors for this. Out of all these, opacity effect dot fade out is the one that we are looking for. If I select that, you can see that this constructor needs an effect controller as input. Now these controllers are very similar to the animation controller that you see in Flutter. Basically, they allow you to tweak the behavior of the effect by controlling parameters like speed, duration, and curve of the effect. Again, there are a lot of effect controllers that Flame provides right out of the box, and you can read about them in the docs. But for our current use case, we'll use the most simplest one, the linear effect controller. Input to this controller is just the desired duration of the effect. I'll set this to 0.3 seconds. If I run this code now, the coins will just fade away, but they'll not get removed from the game world. So to make sure that we remove them once the opacity effect has finished, I'll use the onFinish callback of opacity effect. I'll set this callback to an anonymous function which just adds a remove effect to the coin. Now let's save this and check how it works in the game. And yeah, as you can see, now the coins are slowly fading away which looks much better than before. Ok, so now just to make the game look a little bit more alive, let's try to make the coins bounce in place. For this, I'll again use an effect, but this time I'll add the effect in the onload method. And the effect that I'm looking for is the move effect. To be precise, we want the one with the dot by constructor. This one takes an offset and a controller as input. So to make the coin move upwards from its original spawn point, we'll set the offset as vector2 of 0, 4. Then next, for the controller, I'll just use an object of effect controller. This is the base class for all the other effect controllers and it exposes a lot more parameters. So first, I'll set alternate to true. This means the effect will run start to end and then end to start. Next, I'll set infinite to true as well. This means the effect will keep running indefinitely. Then I'll set the duration of the effect to 1 second. If I save this and check the game, you can see that now the coins are oscillating up and down. And just to make the movement more visible, I'll change the Y offset to minus 10. Also, let's set the curve property to curve.ease so that the movement becomes more interesting. And yeah, that looks good. 
Now let's set the Y offset back to minus 4 and test the game. So yeah, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe also consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.